Welcome to MechanismalR.com's educational video series. Half of the world's electricity is generated by coal power plants, and there are close to 3,000 large coal power plants around the world. In this video, we're going to show you how these controversial yet indispensable power plants work. The, the idea behind the power plant in this video is to show you how to convert energy stored in the coal to electricity. To increase burning efficiency, a powdered coal and air mixture enters the furnace. During the burning process, the chemical energy stored in the coal is released as heat to create high temperatures inside the furnace. This heat passes to the water inside the coils located in the furnace. The hot water is then forced to move to the boiler where it evaporates and generates high pressure steam. The high pressure steam is taken to the steam turbine and the energy inside the steam is converted to mechanical energy. This mechanical en energy is then transferred to the generator where it will be converted to electricity. The generated electricity is finally transferred to the grid through a transformer and is ready to be consumed by the public. There are two major water cycles in any power plant whether it is a coal, nuclear, or a gas power plant. The first is the closed loop power producing water cycle, which we call the steam cycle. The second is the open loop cooling water cycle. No thermal power plant can operate without these two cycles. Let's begin by describing the closed loop power cycle, or the steam cycle, starting from the furnace. First, Intense heat inside the furnace heats the water within the coils, which is coming from the condenser. This heated water is forced to the boiler where it evaporates. The pressure inside the boiler can be more than 200 bars. The high pressure steam obtained in the boiler is sent to the steam turbine, which passes the steam between fixed and rotating sections, converting the energy stored in the steam to mechanical energy. The steam leaves the turbine at close to vacuum pressure, near condensation temperature. This saturated dry steam then enters the condenser where it is condensed to water by the cold water coming from the river. Finally, the condensed water is pumped to the furnace where it starts heating the coils inside the furnace to complete its cycle. Here's a question for you to think about that we'll answer in our next video. Why is a very small portion of pressurized steam diverted to the bearing section of the turbine where the low pressure steam leaves the turbine? Now let's discuss the second cycle, the open loop cooling cycle, which starts by pumping cold water from the up upstream section of the river into the condenser inside the steel tubes. While saturated steam is condensed to water, the water from the river is heated. The heated water is then dispensed to the downstream section of the river. To protect ecological stability of the river, the temperature rise should be kept to a minimum. In short, dispelled water makes the river or lake warmer than it otherwise would be. This is why some marine animals, such as manatees, spend their winter close to the power plants to protect themselves from the harsh winter temperatures. This concludes the first part of our presentation about coal power plants. The second presentation will describe key facts about the 400 megawatt coal power plant. Thank you for watching our videos and for your continued support. Please don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so already.